Hi, my name is Tony McClelland. I'm the marketing manager for Early Riser Planters at Case IH. And today we want to talk a little bit about the importance of every seed to our customers. They really only get one chance to plant with a limited time frame and a, and a limited window um, for the right conditions and the right uh, and just being timely for the climate zone that, that our customers are in. So there's a lot of talking points about the early riser planter and some of the design traits that are unique to the early riser planter. And we want to review these design traits so that you have a good understanding of what separates us, Case IH, with the early riser versus our competitors. We know the importance of placing every single seed properly so that it germinates as quickly as possible and as uniformly as possible. And if we take a little deeper look at some of the agronomic principles creating that good stand, we can really look at two different drivers. One is of photocopy plants or the idea of getting plants up at the same time so that plants aren't coming up behind some of their neighbors, which is a major impact on yield. We can also talk on the drivers of a picket fence stand. In other words, proper singulation, proper spacing, proper population of seed. Um, <clears throat> we can see that you know, if we screw up any of these agronomic factors, it can have a negative impact to our yield. The photocopy plants has a much greater impact to yield. Most studies have shown anywhere from 9 to 22 percent, which really impacts the bottom line. Whereas the picket fence stand, proper spacing and population can also hurt us if we, if we do a poor job of it, however not as much. Interesting point on the planter, when we take a look at the row unit, it's, it's the, uh, the metering that is more responsible for placement of the seed and dropping of the seed, whereas it's, it's the way that the row unit engages the soil that is really a driver of photocopy plants. The photocopy plant factors are proper seed depth um, to moisture, also uniform seed depth across the planter and across the whole field, good seed to soil contact, and uniform soil density around that seed where those early roots are gonna get started. When we look at picket fence stand factors, those are accurate seed population and accurate in-row seed spacing. So as we look at this list of things that is important to seed placement, um, and we start to look at the, the early riser design traits of the way that it, that it places seed, you'll start to understand why it is that it's not uncommon to hear early riser owners and operators may see uh, a, a, a faster germination and emergence anywhere from one to five days faster than a neighbor with a competitive planter that may have planted right across the fence line in the same day and the same conditions. And, uh, and typically, behind an early riser, when you go out and you start doing your leaf counts and really examining the quality of your stand, the early riser typically delivers a much better, more uniform stand, which of course lends itself to better yields. So here we are by our soil profile demonstrator, and we like to use this tool to show you some of the early riser design traits um, as compared to a competitive row unit. And this really will show what makes an early riser unique. And if we look at some of the things that are different, we start off with our leading disc disc openers versus a nose-to-nose -nose disc opener. The leading disc opener um, opens a trench at about a 12 degree opening, whereas a nose-to-nose -nose opens it at a 14 degree opening. The next step are the gauge wheels. A couple different things on the gauge wheels. First of all, we pull our gauge wheels. There's an arm that pulls it from the front and uh, it, 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 there's less rolling resistance, less opportunity to bulldoze and loose soil. On a conventional row unit, the gauge wheels are pushed. So you can see they're pushed from the back. Think of it as a wheelbarrow. It's a lot easier to pull a, wheel, a, a heavy loaded wheelbarrow through soft ground than it is to push it. Or if you encounter an obstacle, it's easier to pull it over the obstacle than it is to push it. There's zero maintenance on an early riser. On a conventional row unit, there's always gonna be grease cirques, um, two per row unit. An early riser has zero per row unit. If it's a uh, time to spend greasing the planter in the morning, there's, there's no maintenance on an early riser. It, it means you get to the field faster and get to planting faster. The next thing is the gauge wheels, the, the actual shape of the gauge wheels. On an early riser, you'll see that um, we have these reduced inner diameters. Think of this as a storage pocket to store soil while we're holding the trench open before we close it. Um, we're not compressing the soil close to where the seed is going to go. On a conventional row unit, it's a flatter profiled trench, which basically compresses and firms that soil right up on the seed trench to hold it open long enough to place the seed. 
So one of the things to look at here is the difference of the pulled gauge wheel and the amount of soil that kind of gets pushed up in front of it in comparison to a pushed gauge wheel where you see more soil tends to get kind of bulldozed in front and that's fairly typical in lighter soils. The other things that we can look at is notice that the sides of the trench have these ridges that are kind of humped up along and that's a result of these reduced inner diameter gauge wheels having a place to store the soil and you'll notice this is a very loose and crumbly sidewall um, in comparison to a pushed gauge wheel it's it's much more compressed it's more firm and you can actually feel that one of the big things with our pulled gauge wheels and our reduced inner diameter is we're less likely to um, create sidewall compaction or uh, which can result in hatchet roots. When, when the little seedling um, first germinates and emerges, we want those, those baby roots to have less compacted soil so they can proliferate in all directions and get that plant off to a good healthy start. And when you have a uh, tighter sidewalls like you see over here, um, you do run the risk of, of those roots having some sidewall compaction to deal with and a lot of times you will see uh, hatchet roots or mohawk roots as those roots kind of go along the sidewall before they actually penetrate through it. The other thing to notice about an early riser row unit is that the, the bottom of the trench is flat and we do that with this furrow forming point. It follows behind the shadow of the blades to knock the bottom of that tr seed trench flat so that when we drop seed they consistently fall to the same depth which lends itself to uniform emergence. On a competitive gauge wheel with the nose to nose openers, you'll notice that there is a ribbon of soil or a W in the bottom of the seed trench, which would lend itself to a less consistent placement of the seed depth. If the seed falls on top of that little ribbon or one side or the other, it's just not as consistent depth placement. Now that we've opened the trench and placed the seed, let's take a look at our two stage closing system. This closing system is very gentle and we have very good seed to soil contact that allows the seed to germinate very quickly and the density of soil around that seed is also very uniform so that those early baby roots can really get off to a good start in life and proliferate very quickly. Stage one is uh, th these inverted closing discs. You can see they're inverted and their purpose really is to squeeze the trench closed from the sides and if we take a look at this uh, as it runs you can kind of see that it just zips the trench closed from the bottom up. The moist soil which we are planting to goes right back where it was on top of the seed. The top soil goes right back where it was on top of the soil. So there's really minimal disruption to the profile of the soil. Stage two is a rubber press wheel. This rubber press wheel really just comes along and firms down the soil it gives us good seed to soil contact by squishing out any air pockets and it just kind of gently firms the soil. One of the things that's unique about this rubber press wheel is that you notice um, we do have ribs inside here which allows it to be a little more um, aggressive on the edges of the sidewall but gentle on top of the seed trench where the seed's going to go. Lastly, you'll notice the imprint left behind on the early riser. This kind of little chevron or crowfoot pattern is very intentional. If your soils are susceptible to a little bit of surface crusting, it gives a place for that, um, for that crust to crack open for that baby plant and that little seedling to emerge. A couple other points about this closing system. You can see the finish is very flat. Um, if we do get a pounding rain event, it's, it's less likely for this closing system or this finish to, to wash out or erode away. Also in a droughty condition, if the soil gets very dry where it's contracting, this finish is a lot less likely to dry out and crack open exposing the seed. So on a conventional row unit where the trench is more formed and more compressed, a V-press or pinch wheel style closing system um, works a lot better because it has to uh, be kind of aggressive and basically crush the trench closed from the top down and you can see a typical finish behind a v-press system looks like this. A couple points about this when you see these two little ditches if you will that are created if we do get a pounding rain the water tends to flow through a trench so there is potential for this to wash out during a heavy rain event. Conversely, uh, if it gets dry or a droughty condition after planting, as the soil contracts, it is possible 
for this style finish to crack open, exposing the seed trench and exposing the seed, which can have a, a negative impact on the stand and the germination. Hopefully you can see some of the agronomic design traits that are unique to the early riser planter. And it's not just the, uh, the technology that complements the row unit, but we've got a lot of design traits baked right into the iron where it engages the soil to put the seed in an environment where it can germinate as quickly as possible and give as uniform and as perfect a stand as possible right out of the gate.